Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Magic Towers Resort. So in the last episode we worked on the jungle area and in that episode I also already said that we will be continuing work on the parking lot in the next episode. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So for now let's focus on a slightly uh, different bit though. We need some more uh, more public transportation and in this case we're building a little loop for the taxis and ride share. So for those who don't know this, uh, the ride share are things like Uber and Lyft and things like that. And they tend to be pretty popular in larger cities, um, and especially for tourists, because it's usually just a lot cheaper than a taxi and the service tends to be a lot better than taxis as well. So uh, that's why most theme parks, or at least theme parks in, in large theme park areas, Again, I'm most specifically talking about Orlando here. Um, you have these um, taxi and uh, rideshare drop-offs everywhere um, because they come in quite a, quite large numbers. So uh, my idea for this is that uh, taxis and rideshares will be able to come in here, um, then queue up at a buffer. So there's a buffer area, which is just a parking lot where they can wait for their um, for their Uber lift of, or person who they uh, who ordered the taxi and then they can drive up to the path and the person will be able to safely enter the vehicle and then after that the vehicle will be able to move on on its merry way so at first I figured that I'd make the buffer on that side on the right there um, but I very soon realized that that didn't make a lot of sense so, so don't get too attached to that because i will be moving that to the other side instead um of course uh well not of course but i'm imagining this uh, park to be in an area where people drive on the right side of the road and um with that also comes the fact that the person in a side of uh, inside of a taxi will usually get in and out on the right side of the vehicle um, so we need to make sure that the vehicles enter from the right side um, to actually accommodate that as well so that people can actually get in into the vehicle at the right side of the vehicle. Um, so I'm using the uh, lattice fence work here for the lines on the road. I um, initially wanted to go with the uh, snow covered snow fences um, or wooden fences I mean. But I decided not to do that because it just looks a bit too unclean and these lines are a bit more uh, perfect if you will. And the park that we are building here has a pretty sterile feel to it. So we are basically pretending as if this park um, hasn't opened yet or has only very recently opened. So there is not a lot of wear and tear on this park yet. So that's kind of the style that I'm going for. So having perfectly straight lines is kind of what I wanted to go for anyways. So we have a little backstage area there, which becomes a bit hard to hide. Um, so I'm just putting some vegetation there to hide that, uh, which is fine for the for this type of area because we don't need any giant teaming anymore because you're out of the magic, if you will, here anyways. So next up, I wanted to make an access road, um, but after trying some different things, I decided to not place the road right there yet and instead I will be moving it on further and then uh, on top of the hill there we can actually make a, a public road that dry, uh, that goes along these, um, these bus and these taxi loops basically. So here I'm removing the buffer and adding the buffer onto the other side instead uh, again because it just was a bit cleaner to do it that way. And also that way it allows me to um, make the uh, taxi buffer um, actually straight instead of diagonal. And that just makes it a bit easier to work with in terms of the lines on the road. It just makes it a bit clearer as to what this actually is. So this buffer isn't very large right now. I could probably expand it in the future if I need to. Um, but for now this will work. Um, at the size that this park is at we probably need it to be bigger. Um, but I'm purposely keeping some space there uh, so we can always expand it in the future but for now I felt like this is the right kind of size because uh, the taxi loop is already quite sizable it's pretty pretty large um, so I think because of that because the roads are so large I think it will already be able to um, um, uh, it will actually already allow for a lot of cars to actually be there 
So moving on though, now that we have the taxi and rideshare loop in there, I'm just filling things up a bit more with some vegetation. But after that, we actually do move on to the parking lot. Now, <laughs> the parking lot is not the most exciting thing. Um, so here I'll uh, admit something. I actually um, didn't build half of this um, after the jungle was done. So instead, uh, I already built this before the jungle was actually there already. I just made sure to not zoom out. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to prevent two boring episodes after each other because I think the um, infrastructure episodes are a bit less interesting to look at so or at least maybe not per se less interesting to look at but i think they appeal to different kinds of people so i want to make sure to accommodate both anyway so what we are about to start now is the actual parking lot so for the parking lot i wanted uh, to do one thing because this parking lot while we may not build the entire parking lot on our map here, it's gonna kind of go off the edge of the, of the map and we'll just pretend that there's more to it. But it will be very large. And because of that, I wanted to make it possible to have some kind of transportation form to get the guests all the way to the, to the pedestrian path here. Because otherwise, um, with a parking lot of the size of a Magic Kingdom park, for instance, it is a really long walk and... Um, even though this park may or may not be in America, I think it would be nice for people to uh, not have to walk all that distance. Because it's a pretty boring walk. So instead what I'm going for is a parking lot tram. These um, seem to be uh, pretty uh, common in the, um, in the US in some places. Uh, basically it's like a little tram, like a studio tram, a very open one that you can just hop on and hop off. Kind of like a really long mini golf train. Uh, no, no, like a golf, a golfing cart train, basically. <laughs> it's kind of what it looks like. Um, <laughs> where people can just jump on and then uh, uh, be transported all the way to the entrance or um, to another place in the parking lot where they need to be. So here I'm placing the road lines for my parking lot. And I very quickly realized that I wasn't doing it very efficiently. So instead I uh, um, only made a small section and then just copied it over. I have a video on my channel on how to do that if you uh, would like to learn more. But it basically uh, is as simple as building a ride, making sure you have zero clearance uh, enabled, test the ride, and then save the ride as a, uh, with uh, the scenery design as well. And then you can just place it all around. So that's how I was able to do the parking lot rather quickly. Or at least a lot faster than it would have been if I had to do all of that by hand, which I uh, wouldn't have wanted to do. So yeah, that went pretty fast. Um, so this parking lot is specifically kind of designed to allow for a lot of people to get in and out of there really fast. So um, as you can see, all the parking lots face the same way. I would imagine the cars to drive all the way up to the to the side of the um, um, of the pedestrian path of the park, basically, and uh, then they'd be able to. Um, uh, to drive into one of the um, one of the uh, parking spots basically and once they're done they'll just be able to uh, drive for usually uh, to get out of the parking lot again which hopefully makes it very efficient I see large uh, parking lots usually do this as well just make it easier to get in and out uh, without having to back up and accidentally uh, potentially hit something um, other parks like um, the Afteling for instance uh, don't have this, they have very narrow streets with the parking on the left and right side of the road, you have to be very careful, um, so it definitely uh, it, it requires some driving skills to uh, get through that safely. Um, and of course uh, with the size that this, uh, this theme park is at, uh, I just want to make it a bit more safe than the Efteling uh, parking lot is. Um, which even though it is very narrow, people actually drive very slowly, so it's not really an issue. Um, but it's, it's, it always feels a bit too too narrow, because if people are actually crossing you uh, while you're driving your car there, just people walking to the car, they actually have to get in between cars, because otherwise the car will not actually fit. Anyways though, um, with that parking lot out of the way though, I really wanted to expand upon it because it was not large enough yet. So on the side of the entertainment and dining uh, complex, I'm adding a small parking lot as well. 
and for the rest we'll just imagine that it is off the uh, off the maps uh, bound basically because to be honest even though i would very much like the entire parking lot to be on this map as well because you know for the realism aspect and things like that it's just not the most interesting um <laughs> part of a park and um, I think this small sample size that we give you here gives you a good idea of what the rest of the parking lot looks like. So we can just uh, imagine that it continues on off the edge of the map. Before we get to the end of the video though, I really quickly wanted to say that um, this video is a little bit shorter than some of my other videos. You'll notice that my jungle episode was a bit short as well. The reason for that again is because I kind of did the parking lot and the jungle area at the same time. Um, which basically meant that uh, I didn't have as much time for both as I would usually uh, do for a video. So that is why it's a bit shorter. I would like my videos to be a little bit longer. Also, this parking lot time lapse is actually sped up a lot more than my other videos are. Mainly because it's uh, just a lot of me placing lines. Uh, I didn't find it the most interesting thing. So I figured why not actually um, speed it up a little bit more. But that also means that the episode's a bit shorter. So I hope you guys are okay with that. Um, anyways though, uh, back to the episode. So you can see me play some pylons there. Or at least I think they look like pylons. So the way I did that is by using the, um, the steel fence and uh, the, the ones with the, the pillars on them specifically. If you um, kind of put them into the ground, they'll actually appear to kind of look like some form of pylon. And I quite like that to, um, to signify some of the edges of the, uh, of the parking lot or uh, parts where the, where the cars wouldn't be able to drive for safety. So you can do two things with them, you can color them uh, white, in that case they'll actually show up as a road marking line as well. Or you can paint them black and in that case they kind of blend with the texture of the asphalt. And you won't really notice the line being there. So I use both variations here just to uh, just to add some extra details to the parking lot. And I think it works pretty well. Usually parking lots are quite boring, so you really have to try to make it more interesting, to make it more visually pleasing. But really, just by looking at uh, reference images of real uh, parking lots, you, you get a lot of the more dirty details that you can put in there. To make it more realistic, but also more interesting to look at. Speaking of which, um, the reference images that I mostly use for this parking lot are amazing aerial pictures from BioReconstruct. If you don't know BioReconstruct, check out his uh, Twitter page. He is a, um, or at least he owns a helicopter in the Orlando area. And basically what he does multiple times a week is fly over the theme parks and take pictures from above. Now, this may sound very nerdy, but that's just... Mm, that's so good to look at. <laughs> um, so you basically get these aerial pictures that show you all the backstage areas of the theme parks. Uh, he has pictures of the parking lot with with cars going around, with the with the trams going around. Um, just a really good resource in general for Rollercoaster Tycoon because he kind of gives the same viewpoint that we have of our parks in Rollercoaster Tycoon, but in real life. So that's actually a really good resource to base your builds on. So that's something that I'm resorting to a lot if I need to know a little bit more about the realistic details of a park. Anyway, so I'm just placing some of the missing lines. Um, I expanded the parking lot a little bit here just to make it a bit bigger. I think this is kind of where we leave it. I think this is large enough for just a little bite-sized sample that we're giving you here. Before uh, we end here though, I'm adding the, uh, the parking lot tram as well. Um, just to get some movement on the parking lot. We will not actually have peeps walking around there and I don't think I'll add cars to it. Because my only option for cars right now uh, would be something custom built, which would look kind of weird. Or um, uh, the, the car ride, um, which for the realistic size of a car would be too small for this type of parking lot. So I didn't really want that. However though, to add some more detail, I'm adding some lights. Uh, so these are just very giant spotlights basically that illuminate the parking lot. I was really struggling to find a, a design for the parking lot lights that I liked. Um, I played around with the cannons and in the end I decided to go with the cannons because um, unless you look really closely to them you can see that they are cannons. But I like the detail aspect that they give you. 
You can also use the candies, but I felt that these were way too large for the skill that I'm going for. So the cannons are a little bit smaller, they give a little bit more detail, and if you don't look at them too too closely, I think it really works. You can really imagine the detail there of these lights uh, without seeing that these are cannons. Anyways though, we are about to reach the end of this episode. So I really quickly want to thank you guys again for watching and subscribing as well. Um, so if you like this video, please make sure to like the video. It really helps me out. This channel has been growing a lot over these uh, past few weeks. And I'd love to continue doing that because that will allow me to continue making these videos. Anyways though, with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching again. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.